Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah and I went to Disney World recently. If you follow me on Instagram, then you will have been spammed with all of my Disney photos. Actually, not all of them. I still have more that I haven't posted and I'm like, when? <laughs> when do I continue the spam fest of Disney photos? So yeah, I went to Disney World, the one in Florida, for eight whole days. If my voice seems like a bit croaky, it's because the moment I got home, I got ill because the adrenaline was up here and then I crashed and then my body was just like, why did you do that? And I've been suffering since. So on my Instagram, I was sharing a bunch of my outfits from Disney and I did Disney bounding for the first time and I want to fully show you the outfits that I created and where the pieces were from and you know, a little discussion about how I came up with these outfits. Two things first, what is Disney bounding? And then also a disclaimer about how I've no idea how to Disney bound. What is Disney bounding? So there is a rule in Disney parks that adults aren't allowed to dress up as characters. Now I don't know the official reasoning behind this and the actual language that Disney used to describe this rule, but my theory and what I think is you don't want a bunch of adults in the park dressed as certain characters and then little kids to think that they are actually Ariel or Cinderella or whoever and then the things that come out of that adult's mouth might not be on brand. You can't have a Cinderella running around the park, drinking booze, swearing, saying the wrong things to kids who are then just like, mommy, Cinderella said this to me. That's not good for the brand. So that is my theory as to why adults can't dress up as characters. Kids, go for it. Kids can dress up as whoever they want because no one's gonna actually mistake them for Snow White. Now, the way that adults who want to dress up get away with this is a thing called Disney bounding. Now, I discovered Disney bounding through friends of mine who live in LA and go to Disneyland in California a lot, and they Disney bound, and I will leave links in the description to my friends' accounts who do the Disney bounding a fair bit and are very good at it, much better than me, and you can check out their looks and their outfits. Oh, I'm so impressed by some of them, it's amazing. So what Disney bounding is, is basically taking key colors and themes from certain characters and then wearing everyday clothes, but using those color blocks or using certain accessories to hint, oh hey, I am dressed as this character and I am all for it. Also, once you know about Disney bounding, anytime you are in a Disney park, you'll be like, oh, there's Ariel, oh, there's, Ursula, you can spot them and it's it's good fun. I saw a lot of Winnie the Poohs. Right, we've done what is Disney bounding. I hope I explained it all right. And now onto my little disclaimer that this is my first time. So don't judge me. Like some of these are not super creative. Some of them are very loosely themed on a character. I very much worked with what I had for the most part. I guess my other disclaimer is that I really didn't want to buy new clothes for this. And so I bought a lot of secondhand stuff either in charity shops or on Depop. So I started with my wardrobe, what I currently had, looking at what colors I had and what Disney characters matched those colors and then what items were missing and then started to create some looks around that. And so we shall begin. I pretty much Disney bounded every day. One day we went to Universal and I did a Hufflepuff look for that. And another day we went to the Kennedy Space Center and I wore this pajama shirt that I have that says, give me space. But for this video, I'm purely gonna be just showing you the Disney bounds. So let's get into it. Da, 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 da. Day one, we were Winnie the Pooh. And the reason for that is because I already owned the clothes for it. This is an outfit that I wear normally. This dress, this great summer dress that I got from H&M a couple of years ago, super cash, love it. Can pair with some leggings for when it gets a bit cold. And then this cardigan, which I got um, at Love Not Landfill last year, I think. These are two items that I pair together quite regularly and I posted something on Instagram where I was wearing them and somebody commented saying, oh, that would make a great Winnie the Pooh Disney bound. And I was like, oh, yes, you're right. So this became my Winnie the Pooh Disney bound. And 
It was great. This is what I lost my Disney bounding virginity in. It was amazing. Like I said, most of my outfits were very loose. It's just like a normal outfit with the right colors. Before we continue, I want to show you two non-Disney bounding outfits, but they were things that got paired with most of my outfits. So we were in Florida in January, and so the weather was a bit hit and miss, and it rained a fair bit. And I had this glorious, what is it, daisies? I'm so bad at flowers. Are they daisies? <laughs> Daisy raincoat, I'm just gonna say they're daisies. And this, along with the other thing I'm gonna show you, I got from a charity shop literally the day before I was leaving. I was doing a shoot with my friend Emma where she takes friends uh, secondhand shopping with her and we styled a whole bunch of different outfits and it was loads of fun and I ended up buying a lot of clothes from that charity shop as well. Um, one of the items was this glorious anorak and I basically paired this with many of the Disney outfits that I was wearing. And then the other thing that I got in that charity shop as well was this glorious bag. You may have seen in my Depop video that I mentioned that I got a backpack for Disney, but I wasn't like super happy with it. And then I saw this majestic beast. The size and the style of it, I was like, this is perfect for Disney and just all perfect for my day to day life because it also has outdoor um, water bottle pockets and I have to have water on me constantly because I don't have a colon so I have to drink a lot of water because I get dehydrated easily. However, what happened was the zip broke at the airport and so I couldn't close this. However, I was committed to this bag and so I got a bunch of safety pins and I just safety pinned the, the top for the entire trip. And to be honest, all of the valuable things I had were either in the front pocket, I needed the water from here and I kept my passport and my purse in this little secret pocket here and the only things that were ever in here were my layers. So it was only when it got cold in the evening that I needed to like get in here and open it up. But I am planning on getting this fixed. This is my mission for the next couple of weeks. I will get this fixed because I'm obsessed with this bag. It's so good. Those are my accessories and outerwear. Next, <coughs> this is maybe the Disney bound that I am most proud of because I think it's the most obvious and it is Snow White, baby. So this Disney bound outfit started with this skirt, which I already own. So this was a piece in my wardrobe, this gorgeous yellow skirt, which actually also came from a charity shop many years ago, originally from Topshop. And I was just like, well, either that's Belle or Snow White, but it felt more Snow White to me. So I went with Snow White and I went hunting in a bunch of charity shops for a blue top. I knew exactly what color blue it needed to be and I knew what style it needed to be in order to like tuck it into here and for it to look good. And I found this bad boy. Do, 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 do. I was wearing this in the sexual assumptions video, which is out on the main channel now. So you will have already seen this. Do, do, do. And it's perfect, it's the perfect blue, look at that. Can you not already just see like, oh, that's Snow White. And then, ba, ba, da, ba, I got this red headband from Depop. Snow White, Snow White, baby. To be honest, not a fan of Snow White as a character, as a movie in general, but beggars can't be choosers when it comes to Disney family. You gotta work with what you've got. And what I had was a Snow White style yellow skirt. And to be honest, even if I'm not a fan of Snow White, it's a fan of this outfit. So both of those outfits, the Winnie the Pooh and Snow White, we were in Magic Kingdom for. So one of the other things that I tried to do was theme each outfit to make sense for the park that we were in. And now that I've said that, the next outfit makes no sense. But this is also like my loosest Disney bounding outfit. I wouldn't even call it a Disney bounding outfit, it was just a Disney outfit. Does that make sense? Okay, so the next day we went to Epcot and we drank around the world and it was amazing. We shared one drink between four of us in each of the countries, which made it better for our wallets and better for our bodies. So this outfit came about because I literally searched Disney on Depop and you'll have already seen these items in the Depop haul, but I got this scaly top, which is obviously very aerial, but instead of like trying to find something purple to match it with or red or whatever, I was just like, black jeans. I'm just gonna do black jeans. And then when I also searched Disney on Depop, this gorgeous jumper came up. And so that was like my outfit for the day. Like when it was a bit colder, I put the jumper on and then it was these things. I don't think I have footage of this outfit, but I have some photos because I think with the drinking, I maybe forgot to do filming. <laughs> this was a more cash 
Disney outfit. Don't know if I should really classify it as a Disney bound per se. Next, we got up at 4.30 a.m. to get to the parks before it opened, Hollywood Studios, specifically so we could ride the new Star Wars rides. And let me tell you, it was worth it. So worth it. We got an early boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. We were boarding group 26, which don't know how the fuck that happened. So we went in, rode Smuggler's Run, and then managed to get on Rise of the Resistance all before lunch, all before lunch. What a great day. My Star Wars Luke um, was BB-8 because I have orange and white in my wardrobe because these are, these are two things that I already owned. These are my incredible uh, rusty orange Lucy and Yak trousers and also the style of this outfit also feels very Star Wars. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the idea is there, the concept. Okay. I think it works. I think it's fine. Even though I was Disney bounding as a droid, it feels also like a, what a human might wear in the Star Wars world. It feels very resistance, resistance chic, you know what I mean? And then along with this um, top, which looks tiny when I'm holding it up, but it is like a little crop top. I got this when I did a photo shoot for Olay and they styled me in a bunch of outfits and they let me keep the clothes, <laughs> which never happens when you do photo shoots. They never let you keep the clothes, but in this instance. So that was a good day. Oh, and then I had those Star Wars ears as well. They were my friend Bethan's. All of the Disney ears that I wore throughout the week were all Bethan's that I borrowed from her. Then we went to Animal Kingdom and I wore this combo and this is a combo that I found in the same charity shop that I got this thing in um, So I was in the charity shop looking for a blue top which I found and then I saw on the rack This combo. It's like this deer skirt and then this like cropped boxy t-shirt to match and the two together were a fiver five pounds. The zip was ripped a bit, so then I did have to pay to get it fixed, but still, still. The entire outfit fixed and like fitted to me for under a tenner. What's not to love? So this is my very loose Animal Kingdom Bambi outfit, but I have to admit, I probably saw Bambi as a child, but I don't remember. Um, so maybe I didn't see Bambi as a child. All I know is that it's traumatic and a lot of people have said you would remember if you've seen Bambi. But yeah, so I dressed up as Bambi in Animal Kingdom. Or I just it's just an animal print themed outfit for Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom was amazing. I think Animal Kingdom was my favorite park, but there was not a lot of Disney in it. I do love Disney, so like Magic Kingdom just has a special place in my heart. But Animal Kingdom, holy smokes, what a time. What a time. So after that, that's when we went to Universal and the Kennedy Space Center, and then we did Magic Kingdom again, and I dressed up as Belle. Belle is maybe like in my top five favorite princesses. I love Belle, have always been obsessed with her. Again, you may have seen this in my Depop haul video. This was my friend Bethan's. She just keeps getting mentioned in these videos because I have so many clothes of hers now. <laughs> and it's this great like, yellowy mustardy jumpsuit thing um, but it was a bit cold so I was like wearing it with this underneath. This is also a very loose bell like it, it's basically just the color of it. It's very like I don't think if anyone saw me walking around the park they'd be like oh is that a bell Disney bound? I don't I don't think it was that good. I did find a hat in Tomorrowland that was yellow with a red rose on it and I was like ah if I owned this hat then it would like tie the whole thing in together and it would definitely feel more like a Belle Disney bound. However, I was very proud of myself and didn't buy any merch. Bought a lot of snacks, but again, didn't really buy the snacks because it was all um, <laughs> on our meal plan. I bought one merch thing from the Kennedy Space Center and it was an astronaut fridge magnet. That's how you save money to go to Disneyland, just don't buy anything. Yeah, so that's my, my very loose Belle Disney bound. And then we come to our final day and we spent the morning back in Batu. We went to Hollywood Studios in the morning before heading to our flight. And this was also a last minute Disney bounding outfit because da, 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 this 
top I got from the same charity shop where I got the anorak and the bag from, so the day before we were leaving. And it's this gorgeous blue and white stripy top. And then I also have these blue jeans. And I was like, I've just been BB-8, I'm gonna be another droid, R2-D2. Orange and white, blue and white. These are all my colors, I love it. And then the other thing that I realized, but I never actually did this because we were in Galaxy's Edge, so I was gonna be R2-D2. But if I'd have done this Disney bound and we were in a different park, say, Magic Kingdom, hold on. All you gotta do is add the red headband and suddenly I'm Smee from Peter Pan. So versatile, so versatile. Anyway, that's it. Those are all my Disney bounding outfits. I am very pleased with them, mostly because it was my first time, but also mostly because these are all outfits that I would just wear normally and I would wear these in my day-to-day -day life and it doesn't feel like dressing up. So it doesn't feel like I've bought fancy dress items that I'll only wear once for this one specific event and then they're just gonna sit in my wardrobe and I'm never gonna wear them again. Maybe the scaly Ariel Little Mermaid crop top, but I can totally see myself like wearing that at parties or events or, you know, maybe just like casually, who knows? I'm very proud of myself that I got items secondhand and also I got items that are just now parts of my wardrobe and I can incorporate into other things that I'm wearing. So that's very exciting to me. I hope that you enjoyed this very self-indulgent video where I just showed you my holiday and all of the outfits that I wore on holiday. Thanks so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did. And please let me know in the comments some of your favorite Disney bounds that you have seen. I'm just gonna put it out there. My favorite Disney bounce that I have ever seen is Disney trash. So there's this thing that I do, which kind of just like occurred naturally, where I take pictures next to the bins, the trash cans in Disney parks, because I'm Disney trash. And that's just like a thing that has happened. And someone was like, have you seen this Disney bound? And it's this bunch of girls who Disney bounded as the trash cans, because the trash cans in Disneyland in California, every like section of the park, they all have different designs and they're also gorgeous, have to say felt let down by the trash cans in Disney World. I only did one Disney trash photo for that whole trip because they were, gotta say, they were a let down. I was disappointed. They didn't have the same like intricate, interesting designs on them as the other parks do. Anyway, these girls had basically like handmade dresses in the style of these bins. I do not have that dedication or commitment. So I'm just like, well done ladies, well done. This is like the most effort that I'll probably ever put into Disney bounding, but great fun nonetheless. So yeah, please let me know what your favorite Disney bounds that you've seen are, or ones that you've done yourself. I would love to know. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.